Okay, so I thought this would make a good comparison. The Intel KB Lake G i7-8809G versus the AMD Ryzen 9 6900HX. You see, the Radeon 680M found on the 6900HX is the most powerful integrated graphics you can find right now. And the i7, which is found on the Hades Canyon Nux, comes fitted with Vega M GH discrete graphics, which is on a separate die, but on the same processor package. In other words, when discussing integrated graphics, the 8809G is disqualified in what I believe as a technicality. But nevertheless, I've got two Chinese-based PCs to test head-to-head -head and see how this odd collaboration between Intel and AMD from 2018 compares with one of AMD his finest mobile chips from 2022. If you're into tech, whether it be computers, phones, or audio, make sure to like and subscribe. I try to cover the not so mainstream gear or builds because it's just more fun in my opinion. Okay, continuing on with the video. The first PC I have is a Heister F9. It has the Intel i7-8809G, which is on the 14 nanometer process, released in 2018. It has four cores and eight threads, eight megabytes of cache, base frequency of 3.1 GHz, max turbo of 4.2 GHz, and max package TDP of 100 watts. On the graphics side, the CPU is paired with the Radeon RX Vega MGH graphics, which features 4GB of HBM2 memory. Second PC is a Minus Forum UM690, which has the AMD Ryzen 9 6900HX, which has 8 cores and 16 threads on TSMC's FinFET architecture. It has a base clock of 3.3GHz, boosts up to 4.9GHz, and has 16MB of L3 cache. It has RDNA 2 based AMD Radeon 680M integrated graphics, which has 12 CUs and clocked at 2400 Megahertz. I'll be testing some synthetic benchmarks as well as a suite of games. Other important details on each build, I've got two 8GB sticks of Crucial DDR4 sodium running at the maximum supported 2933 MHz in the Heister, and over on the UM690 I've got two data sets, one with two 8GB sticks of Crucial DDR5 sodium overclocked to 5400 MHz, and also two 16GB sticks of Crucial DDR5 sodium overclocked to the maximum 5800 MHz, and the VRAM set to 8GB. Yes, I'm aware there are different capacities, but my tests do not max out RAM, so it will not have a performance impact. Both PCs were tested with game installs on the same SSD, a 2TB Crucial BX200 SATA SSD. I've undervolted the Heister F9 as a BIOS has far more options available, negative 140 millivolts on the core voltage, turned off Turbo Boost Short Power Max, and set Turbo Boost Power Max to 35 watts. This was the optimal settings for temps as well as acoustics. Without it, the PC is like a jet engine and what I would consider unusable. The UM690, I have not made any other adjustments other than the RAM overclocks and the VRAM boost as mentioned earlier. Now, pricing is a very important one. The Heister F9 on AliExpress, you can find a bare bones for about 430 US dollars. And the UM690 goes for $499 off the Minus Forum website, which does make it somewhat in the same price in ballpark. However, DDR5 sodiums are more dear than DDR4. About 25 US dollars between 16 gigabyte kits and 50 dollars for 32 gigabyte kits for a grand total difference of 95 US dollars and 120 depending on your needs. The preference is the 32 gigabytes because of the faster speeds and unfortunately 5600 MHz DDR5 sodiums don't come in 8 gigabyte sticks. But I've got both results so you can see the difference in performance. So let's just jump into the benchmarks. First is Cinebench R20. We get roughly 600 single core on the UM690 with just under 5300 for the multi-core. Hoster F9 scores 411 and 1813 respectively. That's a landslide which doesn't really surprise me. The UM690 is an octa-core and the Hoster is only a quad-core. Not to mention the huge IPC improvements over the last few years from both Intel and AMD. Geekbench 5 tells a very similar tale. Interestingly, there is more of a performance jump on the UM690 side when compared with the lower RAM to the faster RAM, which we didn't see in the Cinebench score. Either way you look at it, the single core is a good reflection of the performance difference, about 50% in extra in CPU horsepower. I did want to run a Puget Bench comparison, but it would not work on the Heister F9 due to incompatibility. It could be the driver or could just be the graphics itself, which is unfortunate. Lastly, Blender, the Heister gets absolutely slaughtered here too. Between the two RAM speeds on the UM690, we get identical results, otherwise nothing we haven't already seen before. So enough synthetics now, let's get into the main course. I've tested 7 games all at 1080p at low settings, others at medium which I've labelled accordingly. I'm going to put the results up on screen and discuss our findings at the end, so enjoy.
So, very interesting results. Going into this, I actually thought the Heister was going to get absolutely pummeled given its weak CPU scores, but overall averages show pretty similar results between the two PCs, particularly when the UM690 is paired with the faster 5800 MHz memory. Diving into the individual games, there are some clear winners in each, which does make it very difficult to determine a true winner. Given the wins in Cyberpunk, Call of Duty and Forza by the UM690, I have a feeling that it tends to perform better in newer titles, whereas the Heister performs better in older titles. And that could be that the driver updates on the Heister's Vega graphics are few and far between, the last being a year old now. The Heister also produced far more consistent results when running the gaming benchmarks. If we take Cyberpunk for example, the lows on the Heister was keeping up with the UM690 when using faster memory, whereas the slower memory in the UM690 was only getting about 10 frames per second. The UM690 does also tend to vary a bit from run to run, which could be due to prolonged stress, leading to higher thermals and thus throttling. So in some of these gaming circumstances, Circumstances, you might actually have a better experience on the undervolted high stir. Now given that I've tested Plex on both of these units, I can tell you that HEVC HDR transcoding with turn mapping turned on is only possible on the UM690 with two 4K streams. The Heister can do 4K SDR content just fine, and of course 1080p with both of these units are a breeze too. Also, given the importance of power efficiency of media servers, the Heister guzzles down 35 watts at idle and 170 watts when under load, compared to the UM690 at 11 watts idle and 82 watts full load. That should make the choice very easy for those home media server guys out there. The user experience is also another thing. Putting aside removing the rubber feet on the UM690, which which is glued on to access the internals, the UM690 is far more of a plug and play unit. The Heister you absolutely need to make sure you dial in and undervolt to make it usable. Not to mention updating the graphics driver required a bit of googling and required updating through device manager to get it on which most novices may get stuck on. Whilst I haven't tested it here, the UM690 also has a USB 4 port which allows connecting a Thunderbolt based external graphics card to the unit. The Heister unit will require an M.2 PCIe based external graphics card adapter to do the same. And if you don't want to leave that top cover permanently off, then you need to think about how you want to do a cutout. A big one for me with mini PCs is having a vase mount option, which the Heister lacks and of course the smaller footprint of the UM690 is going to appeal to more people. But most importantly, when you compare the total value proposition between both the PCs, no doubt the UM690 takes the cake here. For roughly a hundred US dollar difference, you get a much more well-rounded PC, particularly if you do anything more than gaming and need the extra cores and IPC. The Heister was slotted by the UM690 with a much newer CPU. As I already mentioned, I am quite doubtful we'll see any further driver updates for the KB Lake G chip, so there will be little chance of graphics optimization for new games as they release, and as experienced when using the older driver, some games will simply not run. Whilst you don't have that issue with the latest driver, that's not to say that it won't eventually happen within the next few years. Putting objectivity aside for a moment, whilst the UM690 is the clear winner here and I can recommend others to buy, doesn't mean I don't like the high stir. If anything, it was quite enjoyable as a hobbyist to play around with it and try to dial in the settings. I know it's not easy to find the person willing to spend 500 US dollars on a unit with questionable longevity, but if you've got a spare M.2 drive, DDR4 sodium lying around and can look past its deficiencies, the Heister can be a bit of fun, but I'd at least wait for it to go down in price. I think at its current price of $430, it's a bit rich, but if you can find it for sub $400 for the bare bones, that would be far easier to swallow. Anyway, I didn't think I would finish this video with the word swallow, but if you have any other questions about these units, drop a comment below. Until next time, bye-bye.